We've seen his picture, we've heard his story, but the Serious Case Review says Daniel Pelka became invisible to the professionals who could and should have spotted the dangers he faced. Jailed for murder, Daniel's mother and stepfather starved, tortured and beat him in a case of unimaginable cruelty. Opportunities to stop the abuse were missed despite the warning signs and crucially, the review author found no one spoke properly to Daniel himself to ask if he needed help. Yes, it is very sad that he was probably so low in his confidence, he, he'd probably sort of given up. Language was a problem, but also his self-esteem was so poor that he didn't want to speak to people anyway. So it was challenging to try and engage him, but unfortunately people asked his older sibling to explain things. His mum spoke for him often. So he used gesticulations, he played on his own, so he was difficult to engage, but that should have meant that people tried harder. Among the missed opportunities highlighted, Daniel's teachers raised concerns about his weight loss and noticed a number of bruises, but didn't link the two as possible signs of abuse. Social services were told Daniel went to hospital with a broken arm, but they decided no follow-up was needed and police were called to the family home 27 times over domestic violence and alcohol abuse, but didn't make adequate inquiries about any impact on the children, prompting this response today from the Home Secretary. We've learned a great deal in recent years about dealing with incidents of domestic violence, but I think one of the issues the Daniel Pulker case raises is when people are looking into issues of domestic violence, making sure that we look at the, how those incidents affect children. At his school, Daniel Pelka was seen taking food out of bins. His mother told staff he had an eating disorder. Jill Mulhall, the head teacher, says his mother was a convincing manipulator. If we were aware of the bigger picture of Daniel's life or had any doubts about his mother, then we would, of course, have acted very differently. The school did phone Daniel's GP, Dr Mohamed Pathan, to discuss his weight loss, but no abuse concerns were raised. The school would have picked up right from the beginning. Nobody informed us at all, apart from that only one call which we had. Nobody told us anything about him any time that there's a problem there. The review says no one could have predicted Daniel's death. Coventry Council has commissioned an independent inquiry into the role of its staff. Where there have been individual failures, what's happened to those people? Nobody's been sacked, have they? If this requires us to act decisively with regards to individuals or parts of our service, I'm here to say we will do that, providing it is the right thing to be able to answer that really important question. Can we safeguard children even better in the future without ever being able to say that a situation like Daniel will never occur again? With chilling echoes here of Victoria Clombier and Baby P, the government-appointed Children's Commissioner says lessons still aren't being learned. Uh, it's a real shock. It's a great shame that yet again here we are. There have been a lot of difficult cases and it is not good enough that we are still struggling to understand what children need. The review says Daniel's plight would have been visible to more inquisitive eyes, that more people should have been ready to think the unthinkable.